Okay, cool. Well, okay. Um, welcome to Gru, and thank you so much for taking time out of your, it's night where you're at, right? <laughs> it's, I'm in California now, so it is day. Yes, it is light. Oh, oh it's daytime. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's nighttime. It's night where I'm at in Philly, so. Nice, nice. And, yeah. and I see you got some really nice, nice artwork on your wall. Oh, it's hey, thanks. <laughs> all ladies. Some of them are like just um, artistic interpretations or pieces from history or ad advertising, but they're all ladies. Okay, nice. My inspiration. <laughs> nice. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so it's so like the first, <laughs> the first thing I wanted to start out asking you is, typical question is like what drew you to want to act and start making films oh yeah I mean it's uh it's such a great way to um communicate I mean you know it's um creating films uh performing in films um writing films it all sort of exists as this way to share some emotion or feeling or thought or concept um, and I think that's so valuable. You know, there are so many art forms that are meant to communicate things and this is one of them and it can be used in really powerful ways. Oh yeah. And I saw be, 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 before you got involved in, in filmmaking, acting, like you were doing rock climbing and like whitewater rafting and stuff. Like you, you were a guide for that. Do, do you do you still do it yet? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I started climbing. I love that you asked that. I started climbing <laughs> over 20 years ago, which seems crazy. Um, and yeah, I was a, I was a climbing guide and a whitewater rafting guide. I would guide on rivers here in California, the American <sighs> river, South Fork and the North Fork. And, um, yeah, it's a huge part of my life. It's a huge part of, um, how I see the world. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, it's a huge part of how my brain works, you know, is like all that time, um, just being connected to the world in that way. And, um, yeah, I, I definitely still get out and climb and rap, not nearly as much, of course, <laughs> as once upon a time, but yep, I get out there. All right. Uh, so I have to ask is like, what's the best spot to go to the, for like rock Climb and do you have like a certain spot that you like doing? Okay, I have a lot of favorite spots. <laughs> I mean, like Yosemite's incredible. Um, you know, it's there's all the different climbing areas have different like um, types of of geology. You know, and okay. like I, I will like nerd out on geology. You want to talk about rock formations and what the composition is of the rock formations? I will like lose my mind. <laughs> Um, but there's really great granite in Yosemite and it's big and there's lots of long, like moderate routes. And there are a lot of long, hard routes too. Um, and it's incredible. It's like being in the middle of the ocean sometimes when you're in the middle of some of that. And then oh, wow. there's some cool places that are like places you wouldn't expect. Like there's a climbing area outside of Las Vegas called Red Rocks. And it's like just amazing sandstone and then wow. you leave the country i was just climbing in in italy um last month and um oh. you know you get to crazy really interesting places in the world that you would never go unless you were there climbing you know you get to these small cities and you meet people with like all over the world that are are in different parts of like you know they're not in like yeah the cities they're in like small places away from everything so you get to like learn so much about people in a culture when you're climbing because you end up in these kind of far away places and it's really it's really incredible yeah definitely it definitely sounds it yeah like i i never did that like i i i never did rock 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 climbing i mean i did a lot of outdoor stuff like hiking and camping and awesome all that fun fun stuff but nev never rock climbing it's always something i was like very interested in doing Oh yeah. It's great. It's great. And it's super, it's so much more accessible than it used to be too, because people have written books and you can learn about it and you can go to climbing gyms and like get a feel for it. You know, like it's, it's, uh, it's cool. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you have a horror movie that's out, but this isn't like 
your first horror film like you were involved with a couple different horror things before this um i I think one of the horror anthologies you were in was called bleed and Ah. we're part of b b b c butcher too so how 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 was it like being 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 part of those those horror films uh yeah i mean uh you mentioned bc butcher it's a that's a trauma film it's very kitschy and fun and silly um you know horror is such an amazing genre to be able to work in because you can communicate like weird things and you can like (laughs) use metaphor to discuss things and that's what we did you know with this most recent film um which is also an anthology which Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll wait till we get there, but, um, you know, like it's, it's just such a cool, weird place full of like really interesting people who are trying to like push filmmaking, you know, into like new places that are different and unusual. And like, that's what all of those things did. Bleed was really cool. That was with a group of women also all female directors, oh, Wow. um, and an anthology. And, um, some of those same people worked on give me an A which nice. just came out, you know, um, uh, this past month. Yeah. Um, so it's a lot of those same people, like we've all continued working together and we will continue working together forever. So, so like what inspired you to want to do give, give me an A? Well, Roe versus Wade was overturned June 24th, 2022. And um, what a mess. Um, and I knew a lot of people in the genre space in horror and sci-fi from film festivals because of being an actress in horror, because of being a filmmaker in horror, you know, we see each other all the time. And so we're on group threads together, especially cause like, you know, the horror world is like a small niche world oh, it is, yeah. and like people who like horror anthologies are even a smaller niche world of That's that, true. you know? So like, uh, yeah, I, I knew a lot of people who, women in particular, who um, created in the horror space. And I was on a lot of group threads with them. And I was seeing that they were like all sharing different responses to the overturning of Roe versus Wade. And like in, on social media, I was seeing things different. So a week after Roe versus Wade was overturned, I got all my like horror ladies together and we got on a Zoom call and we decided to do something about it. And we started filming three weeks later. So that was like within a month of Roe versus Wade being overturned. We started filming. Uh, Yeah. And they're all people, you know, like they're all like awesome creators in the genre space. And even though our film is very like Black Mirror-esque and Mm -hmm. like horror, but like in a creepy way, a lot of people like really leaned into like the dark comedy because the topic itself was already so horrific. And these are people I know who are like hardcore horror creators who are like, really? ah, I'm going to make a joke instead. And I was like, okay, if that's how you need to do this, like definitely keep going, like keep doing that. So like seeing what came out of people was so interesting, especially knowing everybody's like uh, talents and love for horror, you know? I mean, horror is so much fun. Like it, it I mean, as you could tell with Chucky in the background, like I'm a huge horror person and I always, I always love like talk, talking about horror films. So, so this is perfect. <laughs> I mean, horror is like an awesome space. It's where like, there's something so special about genre. Like there's like an acceptance and like everyone, everyone, everyone has a place in horror. Everyone can exactly. find a little home in horror somewhere. Oh Yeah definitely especially going to like horror cons too i don't know if you've ever been to any but like yeah. the horror the horror conventions like the horror the horror fans are so loyal like like yeah. they it, it's just an amazing time yeah totally yeah it's the good good crowd <laughs> and um, for this film like you, you wear so many hats like from producing right and directing and you had a, a short period of time for the film, like to get everyone to together for, for the film, like you got directors and writers and actors and like, how was your experience like with the short amount of time you had for this film? <laughs> it's so crazy. You know, like 
while we were doing it, I was like, we can't, we're moving so slow. We we're not moving fast enough because you know, the reason we were making the film was so different than how I normally make a film. Like there's always a purpose and I'm always trying to tell a story, but it was like, we have to stop this from happening. And so like, it, we were like running, but like through like jello. So it was just like, ugh. and, um, you know, everybody rallied, like everybody came out, actors came out, like a lot of actors came out, like the, um, the list of actors includes like Virginia Madsen and, and Gina Torres and Milana Weintraub, Alyssa Milano, yeah. John Gunn, Jason George, Parker Young, Monique Coleman, like all kinds of people came out to make this like last minute because everyone thought it was important and worthwhile. Um, oh my gosh, I'm leaving out so many actors, Christina <laughs> Risa, like Andrea Cortez, like, oh my gosh, so many people, you know? Uh, we had 141 actors total. Wow, that's a lot. It was crazy. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Like when I saw Alyssa Malana was part of it, I was I was like, oh my god, I I I love Charm, and I was <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, you know she's so rad. She's obviously like an activist, you know, so she's like mm -hmm. interested in speaking out for people. She has a huge platform, so like she can. But also, this was nuts, you know. Like I I called her to talk about the role that she plays, which is. Um, Abigail Adams, who's the wife of John Adams, and the letters um, that they read are literally actual words from letters that they wrote to each other before the Declaration of Independence was written, where she is asking for the men to remember the ladies as they're writing the new constitution, which of course we know didn't happen. Um, and uh, she told me, she's like, I've read this letter before Congress twice. Really? And I was like, whoa, that's like just incredible and like meant to be. You can't even. Wow. Yeah. So lots of like synchronicity like that too, which is how it all like came together. It was like all the pieces just were like. <sighs> <laughs> so like, how did you find time, like juggle everything? Like you, you wrote produce direct but i'm sure you did a lot of other things too I drove, like, the camera you... truck. <laughs> I drove the camera truck to all the sets every day that's like my favorite part <laughs> <laughs> so like how do you find time to like say all right wait um i'm doing this right now uh, five minutes later i'm doing this <laughs> i don't know i look back and i'm like i don't know how that worked <laughs> <laughs> I know, exactly that's a lot of stuff to do on, on I mean, set. my head was operating like like a giant 3d spreadsheet during the time we were filming <laughs> um and uh you know a lot of it was a lot of people came together so like if you were like I didn't have to do it all I mean I was juggling and wearing a lot of hats but I wasn't doing it alone you know I was doing it with like tons of of people coming together we didn't have like yeah. money you know we did it on like a shoestring budget like really and you know so that almost gave us more empowerment and the point was we were trying to make a statement and use yeah. like genre to say you know to express really it's not even like the film is you know considering the content i think it's pretty enjoyable oh uh, it is yeah you know it's like weird and there's cool things that happen and it's funny and it's all expressing how people feel about this thing that happened. And it's not like hitting you over the head with like Roe versus Wade content and facts and stats. It's not a documentary, it's artists making art. So it's like embedded in there and it's so that people can like feel what each individual filmmaker was feeling, not so that we, each individual filmmaker is telling you what to do, you know, which is what genre does, like it creates, and that's what art does. It creates like this thing and then you get to take it and and think on it, you know? Definitely, yeah. Like, I mean, the film was great and all the stuff that you had to do and everyone else had had to do to make the film, I... I uh, I'm sure it was well well worth it because the film turned turned out to be really really good. Thanks. 
Thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> and the one, what I, what I, what I love about this, like, you know, it, it's all different, different seg segments in one film. It's a horror and anthology film. And I love horror anthologies, like creep, creep show and stuff yeah, like that. Me too. Yeah, definitely. And th this was like very raw and it was scary too. And what did you like most about making this? Oh my gosh. That's such a good question. <laughs> I mean, I think the thing I really liked the most was working with so many, I, I mean, I got to work with each filmmaker, you know, and I got to like see them, you know, like ex express, I kind of said this already, but like express their ideas, but like, because we were working so fast and like you use the word raw, it's yeah. so raw because of how fast we were going, you know, we didn't have time to like refine everything. It's like really such a gut reaction. And so to be working with each person as they're like, like creating their art, like really, you know, like, I don't think a lot of even producers get to see that when they're working with filmmakers, because by the time they're working with them, like this film, the filmmakers have like really worked out their ideas and have their script and whatever. And like, we were all like in it together, like digging through it yes. and like helping each other through it. And that's like special, you know, like, that's like, we went to war together, you know, like, it's really, I don't know, I guess it's trauma bonding, which I don't suggest that on purpose for anyone, but you know, it's really special to have that with people and, and go through their creative process with them. Oh, definitely. Bananas. It'll like mess with your head a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and I know it's probably hard to pick a, a scene from the whole thing. So is there a segment of the anthology that, that you like best? Oh my gosh. Like, I can't even tell you how unfair of a question this is <laughs> because like, so, okay. Part of like, what was really important to me with this anthology was like, I've seen, I love horror anthologies. Oh, also. Yeah. I've seen a lot of them. And like, sometimes there's one that's obviously like the best one. Mm -hmm. And so there's obviously the worst one, not always, but sometimes you kind of get that with the anthologies. Oh yeah, definitely. And like, it might just be like, cause one is shot better even, or the story is better or whatever it is. It doesn't, you know, and I really wanted this film to, I wanted everyone to have like kind of a similar playing field and for people to like have favorites because it resonated with them, not because it was shot way better or it was a better story. So we worked really hard to get all the scripts, like as good as possible in such a short time. And I think we kind of killed it personally. We had three mentor producers, one was um, prolific actress, Judy Greer, um, uh, Falgani Lacan uh, Lacani Adams, who is with Vice, Falgani Lacani Adams, and um, Sarah Smith, who's also a producer. So they were reading the scripts along with the rest of our team and giving us like really good notes really fast. So it was able to like move forward and progress really fast. And so there was like that. So everyone's scripts were like, and then everybody got the same camera equipment, which was a really awesome camera package that Keslo donated to us with like really rad lenses. And um, there are these like super speeds. And we had Cokes from lens, uh, lenses from uh, Keslo and then Panavision because we needed more cameras because we were shooting so many films and we were shooting them all in 10 days. So the whole wow. thing was in 10 days in Los Angeles and in Atlanta. Oh, wow. uh, so then Panavision came in with another camera package and they met the Coke lenses with these super speed lenses. If there are any DPs out here, like they're like nerd out more on this, I would, but I'm going to keep it like right there. Um, so these, those lenses have like a really creamy feel. They're like really pretty. They're like vintage, uh -huh. you know? And so they all kind of, all the films have a similar look, you know? And so this is all, I'm not answering your question at all. I'm talking about something else. I'll get to your question. It's all good. <laughs> But this is all to say, like, I think all the films like had, and they, and we had a colorist who like uh, Monica um, Escalante, who like set the tone for everything, even though we had a lot of different colorists come in and help. She colored most of them, but we had lots of help, but like, so we kind of, it all like has the same production value, you know? So you can really pick like what story you like the most by 
how you're feeling that day. And I've okay. watched the film so many times that I'm sure I've literally cried at every single film. Even the, the, like you that are like super comedy, I'll be yeah. like, oh my God. <laughs> I'm probably not everyone will cry at every single film, but you'll probably cry at one of them. Right. Right. Exactly. Uh-huh. <laughs> Was there any like funny or cool stories from the set? Oh my gosh. There was a lot of crying on set. No, that's not true. I mean, only emotionally, like at the end of the day, because we were so relieved we'd made it. So like most of the yeah. films were shot in a day. Okay. A them were filmed in one day, you know, so we had 10 days for all 17 pieces of it. Wow. Yeah, totally. That is a short time frame. Yeah. <laughs> it was also like the hottest day in LA. And you can imagine, like, it's not like we're shooting on a soundstage. Like we're just filming places we were lucky enough to get. It was like the hottest week. <laughs> The whole filming was the hottest week in LA and in Atlanta. And so like oh my God. every day, like we'd all be drenched in sweat at the end of the day. We we're really gross. Oh no, that's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> you you have to get like one of those like fan things, you know, the, the weight, the fan waves, whatever you call those uh, things. <laughs> like a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> and what kind of horror movies do you like watching oh my gosh okay well i really like the weird creepy stuff like i love me some ari aster um i love like some of like i love like um eyes without a face and like yes. some of the older like weird creepy stuff you know but that's not stuff that has like and like suspiria and that kind of stuff but like that's not stuff that like you jump in your seat necessarily mm-hmm. But you're like, uh, I don't think I want to get near that. You know, like, that's my favorite. Like, you put, like, Hereditary on, and I'll just sit there the whole time, just, like, slowly <laughs> backing away. Like, that's what I want to do when I watch horror. I just want to, like, be, like. Okay. Right, exactly. Yes, yes, definitely. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so are you a big fan of, like, Halloween season? That That's coming up, like. Uh, it's gonna be well, here somebody soon. who likes horror is like halloween's coming up in the middle of the summer so i now i know you like horror <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I'm, I, I'm already planning it <laughs> you're like I'm, my decorations are right here um i'm like if you ever want to go to a haunted house and actually get scared mm-hmm. like I'm your girl because oh, nice. I like, okay, I can go into a haunted house and play it cool, but it's not very fun. Cause then you're not letting it play on you. Same thing with like a, a scary movie. Like, yeah, yeah. You could sit back and be too cool for school, but like, not me. I go in there and I'm like, <sighs> <sighs> like I will drop to the ground in haunted houses. I will like <laughs> Things. I'm like a little bit dangerous. Like you have to kind of like hold me back. Um, like, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Who doesn't like Halloween? If you don't like Halloween, what's wrong with you? I know, right? Like that's uh, when someone says, "Oh, what's your favorite holiday? Christmas, Thanksgiving?" I'm like, "No, it's Halloween." Yeah, they're, obviously. They're like, oh, over like Christmas, um, and then they look at you. <laughs> it's a holiday for everyone. Yeah, Halloween. exactly. <laughs> I, I love the, the season leading up to Halloween. I, I think I, I love Halloween season more than yeah. actual, actually on Halloween night. Because when <laughs> Halloween night comes, you get sad because you know it's over. It's over. <laughs> oh, it is so sad. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have it's anything? Play like Nightmare Before Christmas till, till Christmas. Exactly. Like extend your Halloween as long as you can. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any thoughts yet what, what you what you're gonna be for Halloween? Like did did you pick your outfit out yet or is that like coming oh, later? I'm a huge fan of last minute Halloween costumes, but nice. like, go all out. Like it is my favorite thing to like <laughs> Halloween morning wake up and be like I finally figured it out and then like run around town getting my like hot glue gun and like finding the pieces and like gluing it all together like as I'm running out of the house that night (laughs) I put together like a full black swan costume one time oh my god that's so awesome oh my gosh I was like gluing on feathers (laughs) 
like weaving and I was like trying to glue feathers onto this. Yes. Like feathers everywhere. Yeah. Like as it's on me, I'm like gluing them directly to my, my body. Yeah. A huge fan of, of like really letting it hit you at the right time. Oh my God. Yes, definitely. Like I, I dressed one year as Brandon Lee's the crow, like the poster over there. And I didn't watch the news that night. I went out and it was, and I got out of the, the Uber. And as soon as I got out of the Uber, it started pouring raining and it washed my face paint off. No. <laughs> it's like a much scarier costume, actually. So I'm over here with like dripping paint. And <laughs> that sounds scary. <laughs> They're like, who are you trying to be? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> Oh, the <laughs> so i i know I, I know we have like a time frame and stuff so i'm i'm gonna ask like one final question and it's basically a question i ask everyone is like what's your go-to karaoke song if you're singing <laughs> you know what i think i'm the only person in the world that doesn't have a go-to karaoke song okay. i literally flip through the book and i'm like what fun song should i sing and then now that now that obviously you can like listen to a song on your phone, I'll like pick a song, put it in, and I'll be like, oh my God, like I don't know if I and I'll like put it into my phone and like go run away to like a corner and I'll yes. be like Yes. <laughs> yeah, I do the same thing. I'm always like, wait a minute, I'm I think I want to do this one, but I need to know the words. And <laughs> I feel like this whole our whole time together basically makes me sound like I'd never plan for anything. <laughs> yeah, we, made, we made give me an A last minute in response to Roe versus Wade being overturned. We did do it fast for a reason. We were trying to like get the film out before midterm uh-huh. elections so that like we could talk about it and like have an effect on like our world. And that's still like, we're still doing that, but yeah. So and then it's like, oh, you don't plan your Halloween costume? Oh, you don't have a karaoke song? Who even are you? Are you even a legit person? <laughs> hey, no, it, it's it's all good. I love it. Like you 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 don't plan ahead. You you just go out there and do it. That's that that's even better. <laughs> I will say I love me some like cake for karaoke or like gorillas because like. That's okay. not, they're not like typical, like go to lady songs. <laughs> you can talk your way through them, basically. Right, exactly. Like, ah. <laughs> you don't have to have them. <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> and where can fans follow you and follow to film it? Yeah, the film, we have an Instagram page. Um, it is Give Me an A Film, and we definitely are announcing all our screenings there. We're doing screenings, um, that are all, um, to donate to local, um, abortion rights, abortion access, reproductive rights, women's rights funds, like in each city that we're at. So all those are really cool events where we bring in people and have conversations. Cause that's what we want to do. We want to like have conversations. That's what art does. Right. And, uh, then we um, also are available for on VOD, on Amazon and Apple TV, and we'll be coming um, to a couple other uh, services in the fall as well. Um, and uh, you can find me at Tasha Litas. And uh, also if you go, if you go into the Give Me an A and you click the link in bio and you swipe over, you'll be able to find all the other directors and you can learn about them and what they're doing too. So um, yeah, and we are with XYZ Films. So you'll also see updates from them um, on their Instagram and their Twitter as well. Awesome. Okay. Well, thank, thank you so much for doing it. It was so much fun talking, talking to you. We definitely have to do it again. I love it. Thank you so much. This was a blast. All right. See Thank you. you. See you for Halloween. Tell me what you're Definitely. Thinking. Definitely. We'll come back and do it for Halloween. Talk about Perfect. our costumes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be like, okay, I'm getting it ready. <laughs> well, we'll definitely have a great night and great, great weekend. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Bye. Bye.